punching people in the face. They have every intention of like not murdering you, but murdering you. I'm Hannah Goldstein, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I'm 16 years old. My brothers were in Jiu Jitsu and I was put in like ballet and stuff and ballet didn't really work out. I was awful at it. I have videos and they're embarrassing. So my parents finally decided to put me into uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I loved it. It was awesome. And then we're going to add and go into the back. Does this make sense? So first sweep, like hard, hard, hard. You got to be right behind the hamstrings. Now transition. Yeah. And then no. tight. And now I am traveling internationally to compete. I was just in Abu Dhabi. In two weeks, I'll be in California. Some cool X guard stuff and turtle stuff. That's what I needed to work on from uh, fight tape. So it's good. And now I get to train. To be honest, I was uh, really lazy and I liked the fact that it was on the ground and I could just lie down. But then I started actually enjoying learning all these moves and that there's never like, you can never learn all of them. They're always developing. And I thought it was insane that there's so much you can do with something that like, you don't need a ball, you don't need a puck, you don't need any real equipment except for a gi. And then there's like, so many things are possible with that. And I just think that's insane. You gotta shake it out. Take it out. You ready? What's up? That's okay. I teach uh, our program called Tiny Tigers. So it's like three to seven, and they're adorable. And then I'll do private lessons for kids that want to compete. And then occasionally I'll teach the women's class. Come on, Simmer Bree, keep going. Big push on his knee, turn onto your side more. Can you get more on your side for me? Yeah, keep going, big bridge. Well, it's hard because they don't really understand all the time, or you'll uh, yell out instructions and they won't be able to perform them. So a lot of the time you just have to be encouraging and then it kind of sucks seeing your student not win and you're just trying your best to make sure that they know they're doing a good job because you really want to encourage them to keep going. Um, it's just tough not being able to communicate what you want them to do because they're so young and to make sure that they still are happy with how they did even if they lose. My name is Taylor McClatchy, I'm 26 years old, and I am a Muay Thai fighter. I started cardio kickboxing when I was 13. I had a friend that started and she would come to it was grade school. I remember standing in a grade school bathroom and her being like, oh, my abs are so sore. We did like a hundred sit-ups last night. And for some reason, I thought that was a good idea. And I convinced my mom that when I turned 13, because she was like six months older than me, that I wanted to go. So when I turned 13, I went and I did cardio kickboxing with, I think, a bunch of like middle-aged moms, because it was like a step and fit class. Somehow now I fight Muay Thai, just like spiraled out of control from there. <laughs> It was slow, slow and sneaky. I started, I, 
I was doing my classes and I started doing the advanced classes and then my gym got bought by a kickboxing gym, not cardio anymore, just like kickboxing. And then all of a sudden it was K1 and then we had Muay Thai a couple days a week and then I was training Muay Thai every day and then I was like, okay, well what's the next thing I could do? Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try an in-house and then maybe I'll do a smoker and then they're like, oh, maybe you could fight. And then I put that off for a couple years and then finally I did my first fight. 2014, I believe, was my first fight. And then from there on, it just was like one more, one more. And I'm like, hey mom, wanna be a pro fighter? <laughs> Everything revolves around that now, 100%. So on an average day, I, uh, I wake up at, I want to say 5.36-ish, do like a 5K before work. I work usually 7 to noon-ish, pack everything up, head to the gym as quick as I can, train 12 to 2. Usually have to go back to work. I try to avoid it, but I, I do it because I like getting paid. Work 2.30 or 3 till 5-ish, and then head back to the gym 6.30 to 9.30, and then uh, head home, shower off all the sweat that I should have showered off at three different occasions, and then uh, go to bed and do it again the next day. Did my first couple of fights, I was doing my undergrad. I did have an undergrad in health science, and I'm currently finishing up my master's in cellular molecular medicine. Just need to defend the thesis, a little bit late. And I'm working full-time in a lab as a lab tech, so aside from training twice a day, I'm in the lab usually once or twice a day, trying to get things done there. Well, I'm insanely lucky. I've heard about people who train and all they have is like maybe one female training partner. I have uh, like a handful and they're all amazing and they, like, they'll drive me to training and from training when I uh, don't have a ride or they'll make sure I'm doing all right. They know that training is hard, especially in environments where females aren't always welcome and I just get a lot of really good advice from them. And also we have a lot of black belt women at our gym and I'm insanely lucky for that because they're like sisters to me. And they're just great people. Everyone's kind of like different. So it's really good to like kind of work your game plan against different styles. So you can see where it works and where it doesn't work. And if you need to add something onto it. I roll with a lot of like the black ball girls because they're, you know, the body size that I'm used to fighting with like more technique because they're black belt, so it's always really good to learn from that. And then sometimes I'll train with like the guys. Force, and you get the underhook, wrestle before you sit back. Right, you sat back in the guard right away. You want to, you get the angle, wrestle. Just like taking a, a slow day kind of, and then we'll see what happens. Everyone is so nice. That's what I learned from competing internationally, that you walk in and it's super intimidating because everyone wants to scare each other and you know be like, I'm gonna win. But then after your fights, you end up talking and everyone is there for like the common goal of sharing jujitsu. It's a really cool experience, especially in Abu Dhabi because it's their national sport. So they take it very seriously. It's on TV at night. Everyone who runs it's super professional. Or it's probably my favorite international tournament. Susan, Anna, Luciana. Raising money is really hard. When you first put a campaign out, for the first week or two, everyone's super excited to help you. But then after a while, it starts to die down, so you always have to keep hyping it up. For California, I won some prize money in Abu Dhabi, so that'll all be going towards my flight, as well as I have a job, so that helps out. It's really hard, though, so you know, you can't spend as much money shopping as you'd like to because all that money has to go into your World's Fund. And I have a little bowl in my room that says World's Fund on it. And it's really cute because whenever I have extra money, I'll just like throw some money in there. It's like a piggy bank, but for a competitor. <laughs> you just got to focus forward, you know? Yeah. Focus on the moment, being present in the moment, in your match. And, you know, you, you know everything you need to know to win. That's all you need to remember. It's so not whether she's gonna surprise you or something, like, no, I get that. My coaches are like brothers and like father figures, and then there's just, it's like a big family there. Your, your telepath, your instructions to me. I'll scream from the other side. 
You got one view, I'll have the other. Hannah. Speed, speed. Ontario has a great amateur Muay Thai scene. Like, the level is super high. I fought all the girls that there were to fight, and I was looking to move on past that. There's no professional Muay Thai in Ontario. I fought professionally twice, uh, once in New York, once in Pennsylvania. I fought for Glory Kickboxing, which is, I guess, the, the, the UFC of kickboxing. It's, it's the biggest organization, and it was the coolest thing I've ever done. I won by a first round head kick knockout. It was pretty much my favorite moment of life. Um, <laughs> And then I went and I fought in Philadelphia, and um, I lost that one. It was my first loss. I went, I went 20 and 0. And then, at the risk of sounding super not confident, every fight I was like, "Oh, this is the one. This is the one where somebody beats me, and they everybody realizes that it was a fluke." I went 20 and 0, just like by accident. I don't know how this happened to me. Like you start, you're like 3 and 0. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. Like 5 and 0, not so bad. 10 and 0. You're like, okay, this is all right. How? How did I do that? But I fought, I fought everyone in Ontario. I fought most of the girls in Canada. I fought in the States. I fought internationally. Um, I won a couple amateur titles internationally. Like, I did the things. And I, logically, I know that I train really hard. I have fought girls in the past that I thought were going to just murder me. I was like, this is the girl. She's going to assault me in front of everyone I know. And then I went and fought this girl in Pennsylvania. And she came out on top. Like, she cut my face open. She did better than I did that night. And I didn't think she was going to be the one to do it. Pretty heartbroken when you put it off for 20 fights, it stung. But now I feel like a lot of the pressure's off too, because all the things that I thought were lucky aren't lucky anymore, because did it, that's it. Now I'm one and one as a pro, just let's not lose again. In Ontario, you can kind of go back and forth between amateur and pro. So I was going to fight on a local show, I want to say about a month after I got back. So the idea was to get right back in there, get back on the horse and just, just realize that it's fun. And then I was probably halfway through my fight camp and I got a letter from the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission saying, oh, P.S. you have a 45 day suspension for a facial cut. So I had to pull out of that fight and uh, wait for my suspension to go up. I mean, I, I want to make a career of fighting, so I don't really want to anger any athletic commissions. <laughs> I did end up fighting that girl on a different show a few weeks later, but it was sad to have to pull out. Never want to be the one to have to say sorry. I know you're you're preparing just as hard as I am. Can't can't make it. Sorry. <laughs> Six, four, go, five, six, seven, go, eight. Big me, big me. Come on, go, suck it up. Well, my coach's crew, Jeff Harrison, at uh, New York Combat Sports. Close to 20 fights now together. I've been training with him twice a day almost every day for the past three years. So I mean, there's not too much more time, I wanna say, in a day leading up to Worlds. It's just the focus that's different. Everything gets a little bit more intense when there's a fight coming up, especially at, at like an international level. There's just a little bit more focus. You don't go into the gym, get your workout in, and it's, it's hard and everything, but it's fun. It's what I like to do. Whereas now I go in and there's, there's a goal. I'm going to go fight the best girls in the world. So everything, there's higher stakes. So I mean, he's pushing me extra hard every day to be better. Super inspired by you, you know. Winner! 
Thank you. You're the winner. You inspire me. No, thank For you. real, you inspire me. We have a rule where we can't fight teammates, and I really like it because we're training with each other all the time, you know, and to have any sort of ego would be awful for both of our training. It just sometimes sucks a little bit because you work so hard, you put so much energy and time and weight cutting and everything you have into training, and then there's nothing you can do but flip a coin. You know, like all the hard work and effort put in, you still can't get gold if you're fighting a teammate. You gotta flip a coin and maybe get gold, maybe get silver, and it's up to chance. It's not who put in more work. Uh, so that's a little annoying sometimes, but Jo totally deserved the gold. She's amazing. She's one of the best training partners I have. So I'm, in that case, I wasn't upset at all. She truly deserved it, but sometimes it's a little frustrating when you know you put in the extra effort for it. Oh, it's, it's really hard having a social life. My friends from school, they like to hang out every Friday. It's like a little tradition, but I always have training on Fridays. So they will like all go over to each other's houses after school, and then like seven hours later, I'll show up if I still have energy after training. And I'm always late to things, you know, and can't go to parties, you know. And while people are out at restaurants eating, you're having like a salad, if anything, because you're weight cutting. It's it's hard, and catching up on school is hard. It's a lot, especially your social life. You can have like four friends that you're close to outside of training, but anything more than that, it's impossible to maintain. No, I have to hand in all the assignments on Wednesday. Yes, I'm handing them all in on Tuesday. I have an essay to write and uh, an essay and some other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my dad trains too. Uh, that's a lot of fun. We always get a roll together and we'll make jokes like if uh, I want an allowance I have to armbar him in like the next minute or something or he's like he won't give me a drive to school the next day unless I you know I win this round with this like it's uh, it's really funny to see like my family side of like me and my dad with my training side of me and my dad because like sometimes he's like a coach and sometimes he's like a dad and it's weird to see them overlap. Yeah, it's, it's very mental to believe that I can do it. I believe I have the skills to do it, like technically, physically, I can, I can go fight people. But to actually believe that I can go and fight for a gold medal against the best people in the world, if you don't believe you can do it, you're not gonna be able to do it because you have to go and physically fight another human being. A fight camp in general is a lot of like, you get broken down for the first, I wanna say like three, four weeks, and the last two weeks are all about just convincing you that you're good enough, that you did the work and you're ready to do it. Someone tries to kick you, don't put your hands down. Keep your hands up, right? Put your hands down, the guy will kick you in the face, and that would ruin anyone's day. For amateur sport, I, I pretty much pay for everything. Fighting professionally is different than they pay for your gas, your food, your hotel, that kind of thing. But as an amateur, I have to pay for that for myself. When I found out I was going to Worlds, um, Lots of, lots of fundraising happened. Um, I, have a, I have a crowdfunding. I ran a seminar a couple weekends ago just at the gym saying that myself and another guy from the gym, we're, we're, we're gonna run a seminar. So just donation only, fundraising, come if you want. We're going to Worlds, help support us. And the, the amount of support that we get is insane. It's, it's so, it gets so heartwarming. Some people give us two bucks and that's amazing. And other people are giving us $100, $100 at a time. And like, I don't, it's great. Cause I'm, I'm a student, so I'm paying tuition. I'm working modified hours so that I can train more, so I really can't afford to send myself to, to Mexico or anywhere else for that matter. I can barely send myself to the grocery store. Uh, so to have people willing to support that made it happen. So it's, it's amazing the amount of support people are willing to give. Getting punched in the face gets a lot less scary the more you do it. <laughs> it's true, I, people, I mean, nobody likes to get punched in the face. I, I don't enjoy it. It never feels good, but it gets a lot less, a lot less scary. Like, oh, that's as bad as it gets. Even you get, in, you get in the ring with someone and you have this face that you're gonna go, you're gonna go fight this person. You're like, oh, that person, they're, they could do X, Y, Z to me. Oh, it's gonna be so bad, it's terrifying. 
and then you get in the, you get in the ring, you get punched in the face a couple times, like, hey, that's as bad as it gets. I'm gonna be okay. And I think training, getting punched in the face every day kind of gives you that. I got, I got hit in the face, it sucked, but I'm gonna be okay. Why I, why I get, wanna get punched in the face, I. And then I was thinking after this circuit, like after um, Abu Dhabi and World, I just want to focus on MMA. Yeah. I'm here for you. Whatever you want to do, I'm here. So I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a really long time and I, I love it so much. But then recently we had Amy come in and she was doing a lot of Muay Thai and she convinced me to come and give it a try and I absolutely love it. Last round guys, let's go! And I've always loved wrestling too and Muay Thai, but I've only done a little bit of it. Almost there guys, come on, 20 seconds, let's go, push! You know, like I love all these sports and I love combining them and it'd be insanely cool and I'm at a really good age right now where doing Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and stuff could lead to a really great future in MMA. So yeah, I'm slowly transitioning. It's like really weird being new to something. It's like everything I've been doing, I've been doing since I was like five. So it's like starting from zero, it's so frustrating at times, but like it's fun. I mean, brain damage is always really scary. There's always the fear that you're gonna get punched in the head really hard, and there's that one that you can't come back from. But there's like this weird feeling when you step into a ring or when you're hitting pads or even when you're rolling or wrestling that it just, it feels right. And it just feels like, okay, this is what all the hard work is for. And I get that feeling in Muay Thai, I get that feeling in wrestling and in Jiu Jitsu, and so I'm just imagining that the feeling of putting them all together is gonna be absolutely amazing. I love doing it all, and so yeah, there are risks, but in my opinion, they're worth it. Let's do it! So my first fight was against uh, a girl from Peru. She was taller than me, which was interesting. She managed to knee me in the mouth pretty nicely, so that was, I was new, I've never been kneed in the face before. So I scored really well in clinch, and I won all three rounds, which, which was super cool, because it's live scoring, so you know the whole time. In between rounds, you know if you won or lost the round. Got kneed in the mouth, so I got to go see a Mexican dentist for that, but uh, it was really good. It was, uh, it was really nice to have the, the, the positive outcome from that fight. I was gonna fight Belarus. It was cool. I was like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Yeah, that did not go my way at all. Um, pretty much spent three rounds with my head down, trying to avoid getting kneed in the mouth, <laughs> unsuccessfully. So I, I knew I had lost. I knew that. Like as soon as the third round was over, I knew I had lost the first round, the second round, and then I knew I hadn't knocked her out in the third. So I knew I had lost. After the fight, I didn't think very many smart things, but I came back and I. I decided I was going to write down some goals for myself and one of the big things I kept coming back to was actual fight IQ. I'm very strong on pads, I'm physically athletic, I have solid technique but I find often it doesn't translate as well in the ring so I wanted to really work on focusing on what I can do in the ring against someone who's trying to fight me because that's different right? Someone, I think some of the differences when people are like, oh, you're fighting Russia, you're fighting Belarus, is that those girls come to fight you. You look in their eyes and like they're they they're they're gonna win. Like they have every intention of like not murdering you, but murdering you. And I know when I looked at her, I didn't look at her that way. I don't know whether I was going into it like for sport, but like the actual fighting instinct to go out there and use what I know and apply it to fight someone is something I really want to work on in the next year because I think. Having been in the ring with some of the top level girls, there's no reason why I can't win those fights. I just need to apply what I can do better. <laughs>